Let's talk about alternating current or AC. I like that picture there where you can see Tesla and Edison are sort of on the AC versus DC side, right? AC is alternating current, DC is direct current, like you get from a battery. So the current generated, remember we've been talking about induced currents, right? Uh, well, induced uh, potential difference, but of course that means you get a current. Um, and now the current, uh, it alternates in direction in, um, because of Lenz's law and Faraday's law. We were looking at that, actually, how it'll switch direction all the time, which means when we generate electricity, it's going to be generated in an alternating manner. So that's why um, if we did a graph of the power, remember power is just um, the current times the voltage, or so the potential difference. So if we did a graph of the power, for example, um, as a function of time, it would do something like, you know, some sort of uh, sinusoidal function, something like this right here. And it would just sort of continue on forever. So if we looked at this then, we could actually make two different uh, distinctions here. We can look at the maximum here that it reaches. Because here's the problem. The power itself goes up and down with time. It's not constant. And this is an issue, isn't it? I mean, if you're going to try to get something from it, you need to know what you're actually getting. So we're going to consider the uh, average, so the, sort of the middle point right here. I'm trying to draw straight lines, they're not very straight, but I think you'll get the idea. So we're gonna define something called P0 or P max, which is the maximum power. So that's P max. Did you ever see an episode of Simpsons? Actually, it's an old episode where actually Homer Simpson, he changed his name to max power, actually. Of course, everything went really well for him when he changed his name. Uh, then we've got um, this one right here in the middle. We call that the average power. So that one is this one here. That's the average. So I think this is something that's actually really important. Um, but we also have some equations from your data booklet that we can put down. So let me just uh, write those down. So first we have the um, maximum power. So P max, maybe I'll put it over here actually. So I'll say P max, that's that maximum power. And remember how uh, power is normally just the current times the uh, potential difference? Well, in this case right here then, if it's the maximum power, it's gonna be, I hope it makes sense, the maximum current times the maximum potential difference. So that'll be this equation here for the maximum power. And then if we want the average power, that's the next one we need to have here. So we have the average power. Does that make sense then? And what we'll do is we'll take the maximum right here, the maximum current and the maximum potential difference, and we'll take half of that because it's halfway there. So I'm still gonna say this I zero V zero, except I'll put a half in front. And that's the equation there you need for the average power. I think that's going to be uh, really important because actually the the average power, maybe just I'll label it here, this right here, that's what, what we actually use. And this is because, I mean, we can't really, if we use the power at any given time, it's up and down. It goes to zero and then up to a maximum value. So instead we can actually, it's like the, whoops, what we actually use. I got a spell right. So this is the really important thing here is this average power. Now, if we look at alternating current, uh, we've got these different um, variables here. So let's maybe just make sure we know the units for them. Uh, do you remember the unit for power? I've done that joke many times, but it's watts. Uh, maximum potential difference, that's measured in volts. Current, I hope you know, is measured in amperes. Average power is again in watts. Now, we haven't really talked very much about the maximum uh, current and potential difference while they're here, but um, we can actually go a little bit further and actually do them in more detail. So we have uh, the current itself. If you consider the current, remember the current would go up and down. I mean, it, it would go a little bit crazy, right? The, the current would be doing something like, you know, some sort of sinusoidal function like this. The problem is the average current is zero, so that's not very useful. Just like the average uh, potential difference is also zero. So the problem is you can't use the average current then. Does that make sense here? Like the, the power itself, that'll be fine. You can do that. But you can't really use the average current or the average uh, potential difference. So this is, this is an issue. Um, so instead, we have something called the root mean square, RMS, we call it. And the good news, do we have an equation given here as well. And it just goes like this. It's really nice and easy. It's I, RMS, that's the root mean square current. And it's just going to be the um, maximum current divided by the square root of 2. That's what we call the root mean square. So this one right here, 
uh, is important. And we're also going to have the same sort of thing here, except for instead of the IRMS, we're going to have VRMS. Again, it's the root mean square potential difference. So it's going to have the same format. So it's going to be V0 over square root of 2. And this is another equation that we need. And luckily, we get. So you're given this. And again, what I want to point out is that this is what we can actually use. Okay, so that's the important thing here. What we actually use. So these are the usable values here. So that's we actually use the VRMS and IRMS. That's the root mean square. Uh, then we can go a little bit further and talk about Ohm's law. If you remember how Ohm's law went, Ohm's law normally goes um, R equals V over I. That's how Ohm's law normally looks. So in this case right here, if we want to know the um, resistance here, well, it's going to be V0 over I0. Okay, because this right here, because we can't just consider the uh, current, because the current changes all the time. We have to consider a special kind. So we can consider the maximum potential difference over the maximum current, or we can consider the VRMS over IRMS. That's also the same. Well, it's the same ratio at least. So this is important, I think. Um, and again, this is for resistance, right? This is this is for uh, our resistance. Um, of course, we can put in the units. This is uh, amperes. This is volts. This is amperes. There we go. That's actually not so bad. We've got a few equations, don't we? Now let's actually do an example. I like this one because it involves a few different things here. So you have an AC power supply. So alternating current. It can generate an EMF. Remember, that's the electromotive force, which is actually uh, a potential difference. It has a peak amplitude of 1.0 volts. Right away, before doing anything else, let's try, to, let's try to decode that. What does it mean to have an EMF of a peak amplitude of 1.0 volts? That's your maximum potential difference. That's 1.0 volt. That helps, I think. Average power of this. So watch. We can put average power. That's that symbol. Uh, square root of 2 watts. All right, now we want the root mean square current. So what we want, we want I RMS. And again, if you're not sure about alternating current, all you have to do is know a few of those definitions, just like I showed you here, okay? You just have to know these different letters here, what they mean, all right? So we have average power, we have an equation for that. And we have an equation for max power, um, we have an equation for I RMS and everything. So let's look at this. What I like to do is just consider, what are we actually looking for? Well, we want IRMS. And because we want this then, well, it's pretty simple, I hope you see. We just have one equation for it. Well, we have a few, but one equation we could use is this one right here. IRMS is I0 over square root of 2. So let's try to do that one. So IRMS, I'll put it maybe in a different color. So IRMS equals I0 over square root of 2. Okay, well, here's the good news then. All I need to do is find I0. All right. Can I find I0? And remember, we're given average power. So then maybe the next trick is see, we, we need this. See, we need I0 in order to do this. So do you see how this sort of leads you on this little chase of what you need to get? I need I0, but all I'm given is this, average power. So maybe I should find an equation for average power. So I go back and hunt for an equation for average power, and I have half I0 V0. Okay, so we'll put that down. So average power is one half I zero V zero. So do you notice now I can take this I zero and uh, solve for it, like isolate for this I zero. I can get this I zero by itself. It's gonna be two times the average power. Do you see I moved the two up? And I can drop the V zero down and I can replace them. Do you see this thing in here, this I zero? That can go into here. Because I know P, the average uh, power, and I know V zero. So to see how now we end up with, don't know if it's very clear, but I hope so. Uh, we're just going on a little hunting trip here, and we found everything we needed. So IRMS is just equal to, let's see, it's I0, and I0 is this mess right here, so 2 times average power divided by uh, V0. But don't forget, we have to do I0 over square root of 2, so I'll put a square root of 2 here. See so far, this is pretty good? Now we keep going one more step. We just put in the numbers that we know. So we have 2, and what's the average power? It's square root of 2, so 2 times square root of 2 over... Uh, here we have a square root of 2, and I don't know if this looked like it, but my square root of 2 stops right here. It doesn't go with a v0. And we just leave the v0, which is just 1. See that right there? So we just have the 1 right there. So that's just 1. All right, so let's do all this. We have the square root of 2s. They cancel out, and I end up with just that uh, IRMS. Let's see here. Is equal to 
2 divided by 1. So it's just 2. I just have to think about uh, significant figures, probably 2.0 if I really want to be careful. Amperes. And that's it. I don't know why I ended up drawing sort of sideways like this. To see how we can deal with AC, right? The whole point is just look at the equations and go hunting for what you need. You just have to know what each of the equations means. Once you have that, you've got it. You got it figured out here.